We're going to talk about straight line mechanisms today. Um, one common use of a coupler curve is the generation of approximately straight lines um, for straight line motion for a machine. I'm going to show you a number of examples of straight line linkages. Um, here we have a Watts straight line linkage. It was patented in 1784. We see here is a four bar. And um, we have the ground link, the crank, the coupler, and the output link. And the coupler point there follows an approximately straight line. Watt developed this linkage to guide the long stroke piston of his steam engine. Here you can see that that point P is connected to a piston, which is going to move up and down in this particular setup. This triple rocker linkage is still used in automobile suspension systems to guide the rear axle up and down. Here we have the Roberts straight line linkage. It has more of a triangular shaped coupler. You can see here that the point P follows a straight line back and forth down here, kind of near the um, ground link. Notice that this line, this dotted line that the coupler point is going to follow, kind of bends up and goes back down. So again, this is not a perfectly straight line, but for many applications, for many machines, um, this would be straight enough. It's really dependent upon your application. Here we have the Chevy Chev, hope I might not be saying that right, straight line linkage. Um, and its coupler point follows a straight line, which is way up here, quite a bit above the ground link. Here is the Hoiken straight line linkage. It's very popular. We'll be using this one um, to do a couple of other things with during the um, course. And in this particular linkage, um, we see that there's a portion that's definitely not straight, but this portion here is the straight line portion of this mechanism. Um, we'll talk about this linkage and show it in the um, package, the force effect motion application that we have. And we'll also talk about how to maximize both its straightness or its constant velocity along the straight portion. And we'll see that both of those cannot be maximized at the same time or I should say both of these cannot be optimized at the same time. To generate an exact straight line with only pin joints requires more than four links. Um, we'll need at least six links and seven joints to do an exact straight line. Pusilier discovered an exact straight line mechanism with eight bars and six pins. We can also use this arrangement to generate true circles. And this um, linkage um, the one with eight bars and six pins I'll show you also in the force effect motion application. This is an example of that linkage. Um, we see to generate this perfectly straight line, we need um, eight links. And these four here, the couple of point being there, all have the same length as shown here. Um, L1 um, and L2 also have the same length. And that's the ground link here and the link here going up to this kind of square um, set of links. And then links four and three also have the same length. And this will trace out an exact straight line. Now I'm going to turn my attention um, to um, the force effect motion application and I'll show you the Hoiken. So this is the Hoiken straight line linkage. It generates an approximately straight line. And that's the coupler point E here. It will follow a straight line. And then we'll come back around and then come back around towards straight. And I'm just going to let it run just so you can see it generate. Actually, let me make sure I focus on this point here so you can kind of see what's going on there. And so that's the straight portion. As you see, it comes around, curves, and then it's straight again. And this is that linkage which I was telling you before that we can either maximize the straightness um, or the constant velocity. Um, and we'll see a table that shows that. And for a perfectly straight line, we have the Pusilier, which I have here. And we can see here that um, our coupler point P is going to travel back and forth along a straight line here, where we have these links all being um, the same length, this one and this one having the same length, and these two links having the same length. We'll just let that one run. You can see it going back and forth there, generating a perfectly straight line. And so all these links can, can be done um, pretty easily in this uh, particular application by Autodesk. Now I want to say a few more things about the Hoiken that we saw. Um, let's see here. 
Um, there's some interesting things to see in terms of the Hoiken. I'm going to kind of show you what we have here, this figure. Um, first, I want to kind of focus in on the Hoiken itself, what the, the linkage looks like. So here we have the crank, we have the coupler, and the coupler is extended, collinear extended here up to our coupler point, and then we have the rocker and our ground link here. Um, there's a few things mentioned first. This crank angle, delta beta, is for the straight portion of the linkage. And we're going to focus in on that on this table here. So for this portion, um, the link will be moving along, a couple of points will be moving along the straight portion for an amount delta x. And we'll be able to see that in the table when we focus in a, in a minute. Um, we are also going to talk about how straight this line is. In other words, how much does uh, the point P waver from this line, and how does the velocity, how constant does the velocity stay as we proceed along this path. We can design so that we get one or the other. We can also design to change the amount of the straight portion and where the straight portion starts, and that's where we talk about this theta start angle here. Um, and so let's look at that table. This table um, contains the link ratios for creating the Hoiken straight line linkage. Here we see different amounts of the amount of um, crank rotation that will give us a straight line, anywhere from 20 degrees all the way to 180 degrees. And of course, we can interpolate here to get other values. We also see differences in our start value, the, the place where we start the um, crank, well, where the cranks um, where the crank angle begins the straight line portion here and of course the percentage of cycle so how much of that's going to be straight so of course if there's 180 degrees of crank rotation that's 50 percent of the crank cycle will be um, part of the straight portion when we go to design our Hoiken linkage um, we have to design according to the same things that were shown previously for doing um, coupler curves where we have link ratios that we have to maintain they are a function of L2 or our crank angle and we see different values according to what we're trying to get uh, what we're trying to um, design for so if we're trying to design for example an 80 degree delta beta where it's going to start at about 140 degrees then if we're going to optimize for straightness so we want a line that's very straight um, we need a 1.611 uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I should be here. We want a 2.82 L1 over L2, 3.73 L3 over L2, and 2.29 for delta X over L2. So given L2's length, for example, 1 inch, we'll know that the L1 is equal to 2.8 inches, the L3 is 3.7 inches, and the delta X, the portion that will be straight, again, focusing here, is in this case going to be equal to, a little bit smaller, is going to be equal to um, 2.3 inches almost. That's going to give a um, straightness where we're going to minimize the change and minimize the error of about 0.001% straightness. So it's very close to perfectly straight. Now, if instead we want to optimize not for straightness, but instead optimize for constant velocity, then that's a different set of values. So we're, see, we're working on the fourth line down. So one, two, three, four. So we're working on this line. So these ratios are different if we're going to be optimized for constant velocity, in which case our error in velocity is going to be 0.34%. Um, and so this just kind of shows you that depending on what we're trying to do in our particular design with the Hoiken, we can use this table to not just design the linkage to, sh to see what the link ratios are going to be, but we also have a value uh, that will tell us how close we are to either optimum straightness or optimum um, constant velocity. And that's the end of uh, my intro to straight line uh, mechanisms.